are back for the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video midweek edition here. Just a few days left in the month of September. It's been a cool end to the month. We are expecting a modest warming trend as we head towards the first couple of days of October, but nothing to write home about. Uh, no uh, 80s, early October 80s uh, in the cards this year. Sometimes we see some late season warmth of that magnitude in early October, but it doesn't seem very likely this time around. All right, quick uh, radar snapshot, uh, sh snapshot, I should say. As of this recording, it's 711. Not much left out there, a couple of showers. I'm expecting our raindrops to fade away quickly this evening. Of course, the big story nationally is Hurricane uh, Ian, which uh, unfortunately did some last minute strengthening before it made landfall earlier today. It strengthened overnight into this morning. And this has been a trend in recent years, landfalling hurricanes strengthening up until the last minute. Oftentimes tropical systems, as they start to approach land, depending on the situation, they can weaken a little bit. But the trend in recent years has been uh, landfalling hurricanes and tropical storms in North America uh, strengthening before they make landfall, and this was no exception. This made landfall this afternoon as a strong Category 4, almost Category 5. And it, was, it made landfall in exactly the same place, basically, as Hurricane Charlie, back in 2004, but this hurricane is not quite Charlie. It's the, the, the strongest wind gusts near the center are about as strong as Charlie, but this is a bigger, more expansive storm. It's also a slower moving hurricane than uh, Charlie back in 2004. And the rainfall amounts, uh, no surprise here, have been pretty astronomical between Sarasota and Fort Myers. Some radar estimates here of up to 18 inches well away from the center, though, with outer bands, e the east coast of Florida has picked up a ton of rain, and there's still a lot of rain left to be squeezed out before all is said and done. I mentioned the the size of this. The, the wind field is impressive here. Hurricane force winds extending well out from the uh, center. Now, of course, as this undergoes some weakening overnight, that wind field will, uh, the hurricane force winds will shrink as this becomes a tropical storm late tonight into tomorrow. But as of this recording, it's still a powerful hurricane. As of the 7 o'clock advisory, a Category 3 storm, uh, this will weaken rapidly from here on out because now the entire hurricane is basically over land. Most importantly, of course, the center. Uh, the pressure starting to rise up to 955 millibars. All right, it weakens into a tropical storm as it slowly, and I mean slowly, uh, traverses central and northern Florida over the next 12 to 18 hours or so. It may not even completely clear the east coast of Florida until early afternoon on Thursday. So it's just not moving very fast. And this will eventually spend a little time over the water and then make another landfall, probably in, in South Carolina, perhaps far eastern Georgia. And this will produce copious amounts of rain up there. And speaking of copious amounts of rain, I showed you what has happened so far. This is what still is to fall from Tampa to Orlando to Daytona to Jacksonville. There's going to be a stripe in here of pretty easily 15 plus inches worth of rain. And this is despite, again, despite it weakening, the slow movement of this system will make for a very, very long night and long morning tomorrow in Florida. Then again, it impacts the Carolinas with perhaps five plus inches worth of rain uh, from uh, Hilton Head heading up towards Charleston and back towards Columbia and into the mountains and foothills in western North Carolina. Also close to Myrtle Beach and over towards the Outer Banks. Uh, lots and lots of rain coming before the system gets out of the way. I plotted up the isobars on our model today because it's kind of interesting. A high pressure is going to build in. Clouds will eventually break for some sun on Thursday. Our forecast for Friday remains a dry one, even though a shield of cirrus clouds will encroach from the east throughout the uh, day. And it may end up being a pretty cloudy end of the day. It may look like it wants to rain by the end of the day Friday, including for high school football, but I do think we'll be dry Friday evening. Some of the modeling, including our uh, in-house model here, would suggest that we have to allow for that chance of showers now on Saturday. We have inserted at least a small chance of wet weather in our Saturday forecast. Worst case scenario for Saturday is it drizzles and rains lightly, persistent easterly wind, and it's kind of raw with temperatures in the 50s on Saturday. That's not our forecast right now, but that is on the table as a worst case scenario. I think by tomorrow we'll have a better handle on this. So if you have outdoor plans on Saturday, Heading out to pick out uh, those pumpkins, heading over to White House, uh, doing anything outdoors. A lot of people have weddings at this time of the year on Saturdays. And, uh, you know, stay in touch with the forecast, certainly, over the next 24 hours or so. I think, again, we'll have a better handle on how far north and west 
the moisture will stretch. We have a higher confidence in what will happen before that point in that it's going to be cold outside Friday morning. Um, with a clear sky Thursday night, Friday morning. Here's one model depiction, and you'll notice, it, <coughs> pardon me, everyone's in the 30s, and you'll notice even some of the colder spots may even flirt with the freezing mark. Now, this might be a little too cold on the model, but I can't rule it out either because I think it's crystal clear for a good chunk of the night, long nights at this time of the year. So the freeze risk, the risk of temperatures getting down to about freezing, you know, you've you got a, probably a better than 50-50 chance up towards maybe Mesopotamia into the Grand River Valley in, in southwestern Ashtabula County, eastern Geauga County, southern Lake County, and certainly a pretty elevated risk of close to freezing temperatures uh, in some of those deeper valley locations in northern PA and southern New York as well. I think at the very least we're going to have some patchy frost Friday morning. If you have sensitive plants, uh, either cover them or bring them in before you go to bed Thursday evening. Even if your temperature only gets down to 36, 37, you could still see some patches of frost with temperatures like that. It's not a warm pattern, but it's not a pretty chilly pattern either once we get beyond Thursday. Now the weekend temperatures will depend some on if we get any rain or not. But beyond that, once we're finally done with E and once it's off the playing field, early October does not look particularly remarkable in terms of temperatures. Our averages drop from about 70 to the mid 60s over the next 10 days, and it looks like we will not stray too far from those averages during the first several days of October with perhaps warmer weather starting around October 8th, 9th, 10th, and into that second week of the month. We'll have another update on the long range on tomorrow evening's weather for Weather Geeks. Of course, we'll have a full breakdown of the weekend forecast as well. So look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your Wednesday.